Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial. We're going to be working again in Unreal Engine 4, working on the shooting range. Uh, so again, what we did last time, uh, we have the rotation of the player being limited to this degree and limiting it to this degree. Uh, so the constraints of the camera overall. And we still have the functionality of you know, firing that and exploding everything and getting the actual game aspect of it complete. Uh, we have the timer. And we also have a score that doesn't do anything. So that's what we're going to work on today. We're going to work on getting that score to update, um, just so we can actually see that we're you know, doing well. Um, so how we're going to calculate the score, um, we're going to have a base score value, something like 1,000 or 5,000, anything like that. Um, but other factors on determining the score is you know, how long the disk has been in the air, and then how far away that disk is. Uh, from the player when it's shot. Uh, so we're going to do a couple of things. Let's first go and grab our disk. So here's our disk, not much going on. Uh, what we're going to go ahead and do <clears throat> is we're going to create a variable that basically stores the value of how far away the disk is from the player when it's shot. So we're going to need a special node. Let's right click to do distance, and we're going to get a uh, horizontal distance. Plug that in. Uh, the target is going to be itself. We want the disk to be a part of this. Uh, but the other actor is going to be the player itself. So if you right, right click and do get controller, and do get player controller, and then player index zero, plug that into the other actor. It's going to go ahead and basically, once it's shot, it's going to get the horizontal distance between the two of us. And then return value. Uh, we're going to actually do an absolute on this, uh, just in case there's any negative values. Because we want everything to be positive. And as soon as we get the absolute, we're going to promote that to a variable. And then we're going to plug that in. And now we got a new variable. Uh, we're going to name this guy um, distance. Compile and save. Now let's do a print. Plug that in. To go a control left click drag to get the distance variable. Plug that into the string. It gives you a converter. Save everything. And let's play in the editor. Let's spawn one of these guys. So 709. That's how far away it was that time. 2,263, roughly that time. Um, but what we're actually going to do is we're going to basically, we want to floor this just so we get an integer instead. And then we're going to promote this to a variable. Same idea, plug it in, name it distance. Compile, save everything. So then we got our distance variable. That's something we're going to need later on. Uh, but the next thing we're going to need is some sort of timer that lets us know, hey, you know, this is how long the ball has been spawned for. So what we're going to do, we need to go to the player controller. Or I'm sorry. Uh, we're going to need to go to the my character. This is where, you know, we spawn the projectile and everything and give it a velocity, some sort of random value. So, we're going to spread things out a little bit. Actually, we don't need to spread that out. Uh, what we're going to do, we need a delay of one second. Plug that in, pass the velocity. And we're going to need to create a new um, Boolean variable here. So let's click on new variable, automatically a Boolean. We're going to call this B is disk alive. Its default value is going to be false, so that's fine. So we're actually going to disconnect this delay. We're going to alt. Left click, drag to set. B is disk alive. 
Okay, set that to true. And now we need a branch. The condition is going to be the disk is alive. And if it's true, uh, we need to basically add seconds to this timer variable that we're creating right now. So new variable, integer, uh, we'll call it disk life. Uh, default value is going to be one second. Now we're going to control left click drag to get that. We're going to do plus one. And then we're going to set that to so alt left click drag it out. We're going to set the uh, basically the outcome of this math uh, to the disk life every time that it's true. Then after about a second, we're going to delay it. Once it's delayed, it's going to go back and check the condition of that boolean again. Uh, but if the actual boolean is false, we're going to set the disk life to 1, just its default value. Compile, save that. Uh, so one last thing we're going to need is some sort of condition to make the disk is alive false again. But, you know, If we don't, it's going to stay alive the whole time. So the condition of it being not alive is when it gets destroyed. Uh, so we need to get access to that variable from the my character. So what we need to do, we're going to grab an event begin play. Zoom in on that. Go to get all actors of class. The class is going to be my character. Go drag out the out actors. We're going to get all of them. So there's an array of get. Outputting of that, we're going to cast to my character. Toss them together. And we basically need now to drag a variable out to represent this class. So we're going to just call this character reference. File, save that. So now we have a variable for our character reference. So at the very, very end here, we're going to do a get of that. And then we're going to do... Uh, set disk alive and we're going to set that to false and that should all be what we need here so uh, one last thing we're going to do we're going to do a print string back in our character class and we're just going to print on screen the number of seconds the disk has been alive just make sure you bring this back into our branch. So let's control P. Uh, right now nothing has started, so let's press space. So two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, but if we play it back in, so it's actually, so we shot it at about four seconds. We spawn it again. We basically have it counting correctly. But what we want to go ahead and do actually, let's go back into my character. Set the spec, let's set the disk life to zero, both in this condition, um, but as well as in the actual variable itself. And let's play again. So we got it at about one second. So that's better. That's how I like it. Um, so we got the main functionality going for how we want to basically generate the score. So what we're going to need to do now is we're, un we're going to unplug the setting the disk alive here. We're going to, we're going to use this later. We're just going to drag it down just so we don't need it right now. And what we're going to do now is we're going to calculate the score uh, based on all these different variables. So, what we're going to need to do, let's create a new function. Uh, we're going to call this function score calculator. So, for input, uh, we're not going to need any input actually, so let's get that out. 
So if we go back into our main event graph, we can drag this out, plug that in. plug that in. So everything we're going to do for the score is going to be in this uh, function. Uh, but we're going to need an output. It's going to be an integer. We're just going to call this player score. So we'll disconnect that for now. We don't need those connected right away. So to determine the score, we're going to need the distance variable. And we're going to need the character reference disk life. And we're going to need a new variable we're going to create right now. So let's put a variable integer. We're going to call this base score. We're going to set this uh, first dot compile. And while we're working on this, we're going to get errors for this function just because they're not plugged in correctly yet. Uh, but for our base score, let's just set this to 4,000. should be fine. So let's drag that out. All right, so these are the three variables we need. So the first thing we're going to do is get involved the base score and the disk life. Uh, we basically want to... Uh, basically, take the base score and divide it by the disk life. That way, so like say, you know, your base score is 4,000 and you shoot it within one second, you know, 4,000 divided by one, it's still, it's still 4,000. So you're getting the full point value. So that's something I wanted to make sure was present there. Then what we're going to do, we're going to take that value and we're going to subtract it by the distance. And now we need to do a check to see if it's going to be less than or equal to zero. And we're going to create a branch. Let's move these guys away. And then if it is true that the score, uh, that this result is less than or equal to zero, we're going to actually need to reference our HUD now. Um, because in our My HUD class, we have a player score. And that's what's being displayed on screen. So we need to have a reference to this player score. So we're going to go back into the disk, the main event graph. And up top where we have where we get all the actors of the class for my character, we're gonna do the same exact thing but for the HUD. So get all actors of class. Grab my HUD. Get on that. Cast to my HUD. Connect those together. And then promote that to a variable. We're going to call this HUD reference. File, save that. Still getting an error just because of our function here. Uh, but now we have a reference to our HUD. So let's grab that. And then get player score. Actually, no, we're going to have to set it. Set player score. Actually, we are still going to need to get player score. So, like, say we already have a thousand um, as our current score. If the next time we go up, the end result of our new calculation is zero, we want to add zero to your uh, calculation for your new score. So, get player score, add zero, plug that in. That goes into the true value. Um, but if it if it's not true that it's less than or equal to zero, uh, we're basically going to need to do something new here. Uh, so 
So we're going to do a basically a set. Actually, we're going to need pretty much the same logic here. Except instead of adding zero, we're just going to add the result here. So that's pretty much it. So let's grab our score calculator in. And then throw these in there. And then player score in there. Compile. Everything checks out. Let's go to the event graph again. Scroll down here. Let's disconnect this one last time. We're going to do a print string. The string is going to be player score. And then we have this guy plug it back in. So now we should be able to see what our value for our score is and as well as an update for our HUD. So let's do it. Okay, so it's not working. That's interesting. Now it's working. <laughs> okay, for some reason. It's not updating the way I think it would. Let's go back into the score calculator. Oh, I know why. So we were putting the score, uh, basically I want to print the result into that. So every time we shoot it, we should get the score that you earn. So 1298 was that one. 3298 was that one. 1298 again. 1070. And let's try one where it's kind of far out. So we've got negative 7074, but since that's a negative number, we got zero points for that. So that's good. Um, just one last thing I want to do, actually. It has to involve the score here. Uh, let's get the distance. Let's divide it by 10, just so it's not as large as a number. And then take that result, plug that in instead. So now we should be getting better numbers for this. So 1930, 535, 1008. So we're getting, we're getting a score now, which is really good. Uh, so all we really needed to do is create a couple of variables. We need to check for how long the disk has been alive, it has a timer for that, it has booleans to check if it's alive or not. Um, and then we have a score calculator function that basically determines these numbers. It does a simple mathematical, mathematical logic of behind it to give us an overall player score. Uh, so that's really it for this version of the tutorial. Um, next step is to basically clean everything up uh, get the actual score to display as well, like kind of Borderlands style when you shoot an enemy, you know, the point value kind of shoot out of him, just how much you're shooting him and how much damage you're causing. I want that kind of situation as well. Um, so we're going to work on that next. And then, again, all, we're, all that's left after that is cleaning everything up, making it work as smoothly as we can. Um, so that's it for this tutorial. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, like the video, share the video. Um, do whatever you need to do to help me out. I want to make sure people can watch this and see this information. Um, so again, this is this end of the video. I want to thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye!